Hi guys, uh, welcome to everybody from the adult ballet community at Canada's National Ballet School and to those of you who might be joining this community for the first time in our inaugural set of online classes. My name is Ian Parsons and I'm an artistic staff member at Canada's National Ballet School as well as a double graduate a significant amount of time ago from the professional ballet program as well as the teacher training program for former professional dancers. So as you can see, uh, we're not in a ballet studio. We're in the living room of my apartment, as I'm sure you are in the living room of your home or apartment or kitchen maybe, wherever you happen to be doing this in order to keep in shape and keep the joy of dance going because we're trying to make it through some very difficult times. So I am so thrilled uh, to be with you today on this journey. Uh, so we're gonna have to improvise with the space that we've got, but don't worry, I'm not gonna be playing any jazz piano for you or anything like that. But speaking of piano, we are going to be dancing today to the wonderful music of the fantastic Rob Thaller, who is a pianist at the ballet school, and it is my great privilege to get to work with him every single day in the professional ballet program. So I'm so excited for you to listen to his music. So this class is going to be a level one advanced beginner class. Well, I shouldn't really say class, I should really say bar and a little bit of center because we're a little constrained space-wise, so you'll be able to do it in whatever amount of space that you have at home where you're doing this. Um, and I just wanted to say that I am so thrilled to be able to connect with you all, even if it only is virtually, um, you know, you can't have me yelling at you in the studio right now, but this allows us to at least share a little bit of the joy of dance together, even if we can't be physically together at the moment. Now, just a few practicalities before we get started. Make sure you have enough space to extend your limbs in every direction without, you know, knocking someone's teeth out or breaking a priceless antique in the corner. Uh, also, whatever you're going to hold on to, make sure that it is fixed enough so that it's not going to create an accident, so at least that it's heavy enough. However, we shouldn't be holding the bar with a death grip now, should we? Finally, just about the floor that you're dancing on. I would recommend, if it's possible, to dance on a hard surface. So be it a hardwood floor or a tile, something along those lines. Carpet, if you absolutely have to, is doable. But you also want to make sure about how slippery that surface is. You may need, if it's very slippery, let's say you're dancing on a tile floor, if you've got a yoga mat or something like that handy, just to put that under you to really make sure that everything is as safe as it can possibly be. So, now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's get started. So, we're going to go for a little bit of a warm-up to start, but rather than beginning facing the bar, I'm going to be a little bit controversial and have a start on the floor. And we'll start on all fours. Just make sure that you have enough room to lie down at some point. So we'll start on all fours and do a little warm up for our spines. So we go five, six, and seven. Cat and cow, arch. One, a two, and curve. A four, again. Five, six, and a seven. Three times in total. One more time. One two, and a three, four. Now lower down onto your elbows. Please don't send me hate mail. 12 counts of planking. Two, and a three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It will be slower than this. 10, 11, 12. Lower down, put your arms under your forehead, and then we're ready for tendu back. So we go one, two, and a three, four, and five, six, that was four in total. To the left, and one, two, and a three, four, and five, six, and seven, eight. Now, you come up to all fours and curve back to a crutch. Two, and three, four, and five, six, and seven, eight, and just roll up. Hang there one vertebra at a time, five, 
Six, now we step to the bar. Eight, we start by curving. One, two, and three, four, stern into the heavens. Six, and seven, eight. Twist to the right, one, two, and three. Make sure both hips still face the bar. Five, six, and seven. One more double time. One, two, and three, four. Still to the right, five, and seven. Then we go for a rise, rise, two, three, four, and just a little test of your balance to finish, and down, eight. All fours, here we go, cat and cow. Really try and feel the articulation of every vertebrae. And coming down. Say a prayer. How much do you love me? Lowering down. Hands under your forehead, turning out. Turn you back. Make sure those glutes are working. Could you make a diamond from a piece of coal between your glutes? And going back. And just hang there. And coming up slowly. Find your bar, chin to your chest, stern into the heavens, spiral. If that other hand comes a little bit off the bar, that's fine. Once more, double time. time. And rise. Feel your head above your chest, above your pelvis, above your knees, above your ankles, above your feet. Now let's dive into the bar with some plies. So hand on the bar, starting in first position, arm down in preparatory. We go five, six, take a breath. Seven and eight. Demi plie. One, two, coming up. Three, four. Now gather up the energy. Up to third. Six and seven, eight. Grand plie. One and two and three, uh, four. Tendu to the next position. Five. In this case, it's second. Lower. Seven. Arm down. Same thing in second. Demi. Two. Up. Three. Four. And up to third. Six. And seven. Eight. And grand. Plie. And three. A four. Tendu. Five. Six. Now we'll go to fifth. Close that foot in front. Same thing in fifth. Demi, two, I'll go a little bit faster. Three, four, and up to third. Six, and seven, eight. Now instead of a grand plie, we let gravity do a little bit of something and swing the arm. So we go one, two, and three, four, hold, five, six, really reach, back to second, eight. Now port bra arm to first. One, two, flat back forward. Three, four, hold it there. Five, six, coming up. Seven, eight, change your head. One, 
to just the upper spine. Back. Four and five. Six. Open. Seven. Breathe. Eight. To finish. Gather up the energy. Grand plié. Tendu à la seconde. Same thing in second position. Denny. Before we get started on the second side, there's just something that I want to point out about this plie exercise. So when you do the grand plie with your arm in third, think of this arm in third as your anchor. So this is what is really making sure that nothing pitches forward or back when you do the grand plie. Because if you start going like this, when you go down and your arm's up, you will know about it. Yes, so this arm is really what's anchoring you up to the ceiling as you go down and really keeping you anchored to the ceiling again as you come up to the top. So you have that really flat spine. Here we go to the left. Or the right if you started on the left. Ooh. 
you don't make that sound, right? So now we have battement tendu. Starting in first position, arm down, and we go five and a six and seven and eight. Demi point one, point two and a three and four. Tendu front arm up and six closing first and eight. Now same thing closing fifth. A two closing fifth and four. One more time. Two close first and seven eight. Demi point side and two and a three and four to the side. Five six and seven eight to close fifth front two and a three and four and five six and seven guess what to the back demi i'll go a little bit faster two and three and four you turn your back again let's go arabesque back six and seven eight to close fifth back one two and three and four and one more to close first seven eight just when you thought it was over, demi point again. Demi point. This time go to coup de pied devant. Three and four. Little toe just above your ankle bone. Six and seven. You can take your arms off if you like or just keep your arms on the bar. Two and three and four and five. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> five, six, and seven to finish. Demi point to the front. Closing fifth this time. Really make sure you're brushing the floor on the way out. To the side. Closing front. To the back, strong toes. Push. To the back, arabesque. Closing fifth to the back. Now, demi point. We go coup de pied. Go for your balance. Wait right over that second toe joint. Oh, that's better. Finish. Just a little note before we go on to the second side of the tendu is this very first step when you're going demi point point, you're really acknowledging the fact that your foot has more than one joint. Because what I find is a lot of people just end up working from their ankle bone and they forget about these toes. So you're working it then and after that, you're working it on the way out and on the way in from the tendu. You're not just going sort of perma arch on the foot and going out and back in again. You're really working through all those joints so that they become just as articulate as our hands. Zip, sharp toes. To the front. One more to close first. Same thing side. Now, you just did it. Are you acknowledging all those joints in your toes? Your whole foot. Closing front. Now, closing first. To the back. Arm in arabesque. Really reach. To the back. Now, going for your balance. 
weight over the ball of that foot, and really focus your eyes on something. Your eyes are your anchor for any balance. So next we have baton jeté, which is, thankfully, almost the same as the tendu we just did, with just a little bit of a difference. So again, starting in first. Five and six, seven, eight. Demi point, point and three. Now jeté front. Five, six and seven, eight and one, two, close, fifth, and a five. Six and seven, same thing to the side. Two and three, four, jeté, throw it out, closing first, now closing front. Two and three, you don't do another one. You turn in towards the bar, so towards your back leg, but you have to change feet, so you put that same foot behind. Five, six, seven, now we go. Tendu, two, and lift to 45 degrees, tendu and uh, down. Second time, tendu, two, and lift, tendu, and down. You do it a third time, and lift, and three, and four. Last time, so the fourth time, tendu, and six, and I'll give you a choice of arabesque. You can either do first arabesque, so same arm to the front as the leg that you're standing on, or second arabesque, over here, opposite arm, looking over that shoulder, feeling the sunshine on your cheek. Demi point. Throw it to the front. Closing fifth. One more time to the side. Closing front. Now turn to the bar, same leg going to the back, lift, again, third time, now we go tendu, and take an arabesque of your choice, either here or here. So before we go on to the second side of this jeté, I want to take just one quick moment and talk about any line going to the back, so any arabesque line. Now, what happens when you go to the back, I'll just face side on, is that you have to let this part of your sternum go a little tiny bit forward. Yes, because you actually, if you don't go anywhere and you don't open this hip, you can't actually lift your leg very far without having some severe vertebral damage. Yes, so you really have to make sure that this, if you imagine you have a sphere in the center of your chest, I like to think about it this way, that the sphere, as you take any line to the back, as you lift your leg, it moves slightly forward in space and then slightly rolls upwards, just to make sure that this stays lifted without pitching down towards the floor. Throw it front. Closing fifth. One more time to first. Same thing side. To the side, throw. Closing front. Now, turning toward the bar, tendu, lift it up. Where's your sternum going? Forward and rolling. Third time. Now we go tendu and our arabesque to finish. Here or here. Next, we have rond de jambe. So starting in first position again, we go five and six and seven and eight. Tendu side, one, turn it in just from the hip socket, three, 
and four. Rond de jambe. We go front, en dehors, side, and back, and close. Twice more. Front, and side, and back, continuously through first, and one more time. Front, and side, and back, close. We go for the port de bras now. So we go up towards the bar, big circle. One, and two, and three, and four, away from the bar. Five, and six, really spread your feet out on the floor. And eight, one more time. One, and two, recover both arms to third. Allongé, five, and six, and seven, and eight. Then we reverse. So we go tendu side, turn in, turn out, close, back, side, front, close. One more time for three times in total, and then we close. We repeat the whole port of bras section one more time. So we go side one, and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Third time to recover, arms up, four, now lift your inside leg, so the one that's closest to the bar, five, six, and we'll just take a little lunge back, seven, and eight to finish. Tendu side, turning in. Front, all the way round. Really feel that leg rotating, just like you did in that first tendu. Spinning right from that hip socket. Third time. We go for the port bras Big long arc. Imagine a fountain. Like the fountains at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. One more time. Both arms up. Breathe. second side of this rond de jambe, I really want you to think about, uh, this is almost like a little spoiler alert, I find. Just like in the tendu and the jeté, you had, this is the thing you're going to think about when you work the tendu or when you work the jeté, this in and out with that femur in your hip socket, not letting anything else move, is your spoiler alert for what's going to happen when you go around for the rond de jambe. So you really want to think about like a barber pole in your leg. It's constantly spinning outwards as it goes around and again outwards as it comes in. Tendu side. Now think of your spoiler alert. Rond de jambe, en dehors. Really move that 
torso. turn out your leg. going to start in fifth position. So we go five, six, and seven, eight, and one, two, plie, three, four, fondue to the floor, five, six, and seven, close, eight. All together now, one, two, and three, four, little port de five, over your leg, six, and seven, eight. To the side, one, two, and plie. So once broken down, to the floor, six, and close front, eight. Now we go together, one, two, and three, four. Like we did before, you cut out the last thing, close and turn to face the bar. Walk five, Six, facing the bar. Seven, same leg you just used. And one, coup de pied derriere. Plie, three, four, and five. To the floor, and seven, eight. You get the picture. Plie, two, three, four. And again, you walk to face side on. Five, six, seven, from the back. One, two, plie, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all together, one, two, and fondue, four, and take both arms to third, six, and seven, eight, and test your balance and make sure that you haven't had any weight on the ball of that foot, not kickstanding it over here so that you could lift that leg whenever you want. Broken down, coup de pied, plié. All together. Portebra. And broken down again to the side. side of this fondue, the thing that I really want you to think about is the coordination between both knees. So you want to make sure that every time you stretch, that both knees arrive at their stretch position at the same time. 
which is easier said than done. Little mathematics lesson. Wow, I'm taking myself back to grade school when we did angles, etc. So this one is at a more acute angle at this one. So this actually has further to stretch. So you actually have to do them at slightly different speeds in order for them to start and arrive at the same time. Because this is the same as what we jump in the center. So if I was going to do a seesaw ferme, for instance, both knees go down and then both knees land together. I can't go one and then one. It's that harmonious work between the knees that we're looking for. Now coordinate both those knees. Together. exercise. So this one is facing the bar. I'm still going to keep my bar angled this way so you can really see what my legs are doing. Starting in first position, we go five, six, pick your right leg up. Now we go frappe side. One, two, closing front, four, and five, six, closing back, eight, third time, two, closing front, Four. Now just point your foot so that toe is above your ankle bone in coup de pied devant. Seven, eight. Now we go for slow petit battement. One, two, and three, four, five, six. Nothing else moves but your knee. Now we go double time. Four, tendu five. Close. Pick your other leg up. Same thing to the other side. Three frappes. One, Two, and slow in to the front. Two, da da, slow in, da da, da da, point your foot, six. I'm just gonna turn around so you have a better look. So you're going from the front to the back. So we go one, two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, double time, four, five, tendu, and finish. But you'll still be facing the bar. Sharp out, slow in. And point. Nicely shaped foot above that ankle bone. Double time. Tendu five. Close, lift the other leg. Size, I think we get off a little scot-free because we're facing the bar, we do one leg then the other leg. You don't have to go back and repeat it. So your mission, should you choose to accept it and repeat it one more time, 
is to really think about just moving the knee. So in any petit battement exercise, we don't want to get it moving from your hip. You have to have a nice loose knee. I like to think about it this way. You know that ridiculous dance move that people do? Like this. Woo! And they just let it loose. That's what you want to feel like your knee feels like when you do petit battement. So now we have an adagio, which is all about can you stand on one leg? So let's find out. We go five, six, and seven, eight. Going up to passe arm to third. One, two, hold, three, four. Test your balance. Five, are you there? And seven, eight. Releve long, everyone's favorite step induces nightmares, and four, hold, five, six, and seven, eight. We do the same thing to the side. So going up, one, two, hold, three, four, test, six, coming down, eight, same thing side, one, two, and up, 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 and hold, 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 keeping your belt as level as you can, seven, closing back, eight. Now inside leg, you can do passe, but if you're like me and you're probably going to hit your knee on what you're using, you can just do coup de pied. So we lift. One, two, hold, three, four, test your balance, six, put it down. Now, same leg comes up. One, two, you go to arabesque, just a little arabesque on the floor. Five, six, and reach and plie. Now from there, we windmill. You go, second arabesque, one, two, first arabesque, three, four, second arabesque, five, six, first arabesque, seven, eight, stretch, reach, 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 and hold, hold, take that leg, brush it front, five, six, and seven, eight, and just look back and have another dramatic pose to finish. Say your second prayer of the class. Find your balance. Remember, find the anchor of your eyes. Relevé long. Lift underneath your leg. Your leg feels nice and light, doesn't it? Same thing, going to the side. Wherever's comfortable for you, under or beside your knee. side of this adagio slash torture session. Now the only reason I say that is because those of you who know me know how much I love Relevé Long and I know how much you don't love Relevé Long but just imagine how much stronger it makes you. Yes so when you're going for this arabesque there is a story that I like to tell about arabesque and please correct me if anybody knows that this might not necessarily be true but it was been told to me so I'm going to pass it on. 
Now, allegedly, the great choreographer George Balanchine used to have this thing that he would say about arabesque. And I'm talking about, you know, a big arabesque with a lifted leg, but we can apply it to this as well. He would always say to people, what's your favorite thing, diamonds, ice cream, or money? So take a second now, what's your favorite thing, diamonds, ice cream, or money? Hmm? I'm gonna go with money. So, there is $5,000 by your back leg that you want to reach. There is $10,000 by your side arm that you want to reach, but you can't extend your elbows past the arabesque. There's $25,000 in front of your front arm that you want to reach, but you still have to hold arabesque. Yeah, it's that energy, that pull beyond every limb that keeps it alive. Yeah, so we want to go for that reaching and really say something with that arabesque as opposed to it just being a plonked position. Here comes the torture. Lift. It's magical. Same thing to the side. Side, keeping your belt as level as you can. To the front. Lift. Now I'm going to scooch forward just so I don't kick behind me. Arabesque. Now what are you reaching for? Diamonds, ice cream, or money? Windmill. So finally, at the bar, we have our grand battement. Now this exercise kind of comes full circle from the beginning, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. So we start in fifth position for this one. We go five, six, seven, grand battement front, and the one, two, and three, and four. Again, six and seven, three times in total, one, two, and three, reverse port de bras. Five, six, seven, to the side, and side, two, closing front. Four, and five, six, closing back. Eight, third time, two, and a three, four. This is what I mean by coming full circle. You go down to the floor, five, six, now really check behind you. Seven, same leg you were just using. Eight, we go, grab up onto the back. One, two, hold, three, four, and a five, six, seven, three times in total. One, two, three, four. Now really full circle. Five, six, seven, eight. And you plank until the end of the exercise. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Again, you should feel like you're still digging that trench down into the floor on the way up. Reverse port de bras. 
Same thing side, closing front. Down to the floor. Watch behind you. Keep this up. you can see. You want to be really attentive to making sure that your abdominals stay lifted as you go back because it's very tempting to kind of let this collapse down into the center but that will translate later on when you start doing rombatement back standing up. You'll have that nice upright torso. exercise in the center that only takes up the amount of space that you were using for your bar. So in fifth, starting with both arms down. So we'll go five, six, just be charismatic. Eight, right arm to first. One, two, up to third, three, four. Now you offer to the corner, then you go no. And eight. Same thing with the upper arm. One, two, and third, four. You offer, please take my hand. I reject you. And eight. Now both arms. One, two, and three, four. Now you offer with a tondu. Five, six. Now you indeed go to that person. Arabesque. Seven, eight. Windmill, like we did at the bar. One, two, and three, four. Now you just walk back, side, front to the other corner, and eight, and you're ready to go to the other side. And because this goes to both sides right away, I'll give you your little note now. So in this port de bras exercise, the most important thing I think, anyway, for port de bras is what your eyes are doing in relation to your hands. So your eyes really have to connect with everything, connect with that imaginary person in the corner, then say, absolutely not, and breathe, and then you go to the other side. And then when you do both, again, we talked about moving the sternum forward into arabesque, so you're here. You go forward and really reach, remember, diamonds, ice cream, or money, whatever it is, into that arabesque. Are you charismatic? Other arm. Both arms. 
very technical term, windmill. Walk back, side, front, other side. If you like, you can finish in fifth or kneel. So that's all that we have for you today. Thank you so, so much for joining me. It was an absolute pleasure to see you virtually. Uh, please keep your ear to the ground for future information from Canada's National Ballet School's social media channels about uh, any of these future classes that we do because I hope to see you again and I just wanted to say that the adult ballet community from the ballet school is just so incredibly supportive and it means so much to me to be able to share this with you so thank you for keeping me company during this uncertain time and I'm hoping that I'm keeping you company as well so we can keep the joy of dance alive until we can all see each other again in the studio have a wonderful afternoon, evening, morning, whatever time you're doing this, and see you next time.